Welcome to today's edition of the Statler Financial Radio Show. Your financial security is our business. Have a question for the team? Call today, 863-877-1188. That's 863-877-1188. No matter what your retirement plan looks like, if you're like most people, it's very likely that Social Security is an important part of it. But do you feel confident about Social Security going into retirement? Do you even think that you'll be able to rely on it? Well, according to a new survey, most Americans don't. Welcome, everyone, to the Statler Financial Radio Show. I'm your host, Danielle J. Martin, alongside Philip Statler, the president and founder of Statler Financial Services. He's here with me to explain the findings of that survey, what he thinks about the future of Social Security, and strategies for you to consider when fitting this benefit into your overall retirement plan. Philip, welcome to the show. How are you feeling today? Hey, Danielle, it's good to be here. It is, uh, it's an interesting topic when we start talking about Social Security for sure. And, uh, and so let's uh, just dive in and see what we can figure out here about what people think about Social Security. Yeah, I agree, Philip. Let's start with this poll. I mentioned earlier that no matter what your retirement plan looks like, most people are not really thinking about or feel confident about adding Social Security into their overall plan. What can you tell us about this poll? Well, there was a poll done nationwide. Retirement Institute surveyed Americans on retirement issues. Specifically, they looked at Social Security. And and here's what they found. The survey found that nearly three quarters, 72% of adults worry that the Social Security system will run out of funds in their lifetime. They had another concern, uh, particularly uh, among millennials, 79%, and then Gen X or 77%. Um, so, so everybody, uh, boomers and, and Gen Zs, not as much, but still 66% of them. Um, we're really concerned uh, that we might run out of money before or during uh, their period of time of drawing Social Security. So uh, alarmingly, though, almost one in four, almost 25 percent, 23 percent believe they will not get a dime mm. of Social Security benefits that they've earned. That's um that's some pessimism out there. Right. And you said almost one in four believe they will not get a dime. That sounds very alarming, like you mentioned. And I'm curious, Philip, did you find, um, like, did you, did the survey find anything about how well most Americans understand Social Security? I think that's another key component that we should unpack here a little bit. What did the survey say about if anyone is clear or understands how Social Security works? Well, they did. They did ask some of those questions. And and what they found was that more than half of the respondents, 51 folks, 51%, do not know ways to help maximize their Social Security benefit based on the answers they gave. And then 33% were unaware or uncertain, rather, uh, when they may qualify for full retirement benefits. You know, there's that that distinction, right, between getting Social Security early, getting it at full retirement age, and then waiting until you're 70 before you start taking Social Security. So that tells me that a lot of folks don't understand how Social Security works and when is the best time for them to take it. And, and that's, Danielle, why I developed the core retirement design to help people design that retirement they always dreamed of. And we look at three key aspects uh, in that process. One is we look at risk in their portfolio, making sure that the amount of risk they have truly lines up with the amount of risk they should have. Second, we look at taxes. Are they are they going to pay the least amount of taxes possible in retirement? And what can they do to make sure that they pay the least amount of taxes possible over their lifetime? And then lastly, and probably one of the more important things especially when we're talking about Social Security, is an income plan. We put together an income plan uh, looking at their assets that they've accumulated, looking at a pension they may have or Social Security they get, and we build a total plan for them so they know where their income is going to come from. That's our core retirement design. Folks, it's easy to start that process. It's a 30-minute phone call, you and I discussing where you are, where you need to be, and how far you've gotten down the path to get there. Give us a call at 
877-1188. That's 863-877-1188 to get started on your core retirement analysis. Again, that number is 863-877-1188. Again, like Philip said, don't hesitate to call that number, 863-877-1188. If you have questions about your own retirement plan, this is an opportunity for you to sit down with a financial advisor and walk through any questions that you may have. Again, that number is 863-877-1188. So today we're discussing Social Security as an important retirement benefit. So Philip, I'm curious, in your opinion, is there a reason to be concerned about the future of Social Security? Well, let's face it, Danielle. I'm not a fortune teller. <laughs> I don't know the future. Right. I don't have a crystal ball in front of me. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's impossible to really know what the future holds. As you're aware, it, it's it, it's just tough. However, there are some things that we can know based on where we are today. Professionals say that 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 fears of the program going away completely are likely overblown. I mean, let's face it. There are so many people that rely on that program uh, that it would be disastrous if they just took it all away. However, there are very well could be some changes uh, to the program, including benefit amounts, ages that you can access your benefit, and more. It's impossible really to know completely what the political landscape, you, you know, political, uh, that can be, that, that can really change on a dime. And so we don't know what that political landscape is going to be. And, and so, you know, we don't know uh, how that's going to affect Social Security, especially if you're five to 10 years away from retirement. Now, trying to make a plan based on what may happen in Washington is not something I would advise. I think you need to make a plan as if Social Security wasn't going to be here. Because then you're a winner if it's there. And I believe it will be there in some form or fashion. Uh, But what it looks like 20, 30 years down the road, that's what we don't really know. And Philip, I'm curious, like if there are reasons to be concerned about the future of Social Security, I'm sure some of us are, but you don't suggest, like you mentioned, disregarding it, then what should people do if they still have a little concern about it but aren't sure what to do? What advice do you have for them? What should those people do? I would say the key is going to be have a plan that uses it but does not rely entirely upon Social Security. So pulling that off involves some serious forethought, carefully planning and utilizing strategies for you to help maximize Social Security in ways that that are right for you in the planning process. You know, Social Security is a big deal, and we want to make sure that we utilize it as much as we can. Uh, Danielle, that's for sure. That's right. And the key is, like you mentioned, Philip, to have a plan that uses but does not rely entirely upon Social Security. So pulling that off does involve some serious forethought, careful planning, and utilizing strategies for you to help maximize Social Security in the ways that are right for you. Philip, as we're coming to wrap up this segment, kind of remind us If people have questions about their plan, what should we do? Well, you know, it's simple. You know, the core retirement design helps answer some of those plans. But I want to point out a couple of things before we close out this segment, uh, Danielle. And and, and I think it's because we've talked about an important aspect of retirement, and that's Social Security. I want to remind folks of what that looks like in 2024. You know, the average monthly benefit for Social Security in 2024 is a little over $1,900 a month. That's a big number. Mm-hmm. That will add up to well over $600,000 in a 30-year retirement. And if it's you and a spouse, we're talking about $1.2, $1.3 million. So it's nothing to sneeze at. We need to make sure that we are looking at that and taking that into consideration and and making sure that if you're going to retire in the next five to 10 years, that we access that and we know what it's going to look like. When are we going to take it? How much are we going to get? 
What do those things look like? These are important things, Danielle, when we look at retirement planning. And again, that's why I developed the core retirement design to help people design that retirement they always dreamed of and looking at those aspects of retirement risk. So many people have too much risk in their portfolio taxes. I can't tell you how often we sit down with folks and they're just paying way too much in taxes, not just today, but over their lifetime. And then making sure they know where their income is going to come from. That's the core retirement design. Folks, let us help you design the retirement you always dreamed of. It starts with an analysis call. Give us a call at 863-877-1188. That's 863-877-1188 to schedule your core retirement analysis, where we'll walk you through our process and help you determine if you are on the right path to the retirement you always dreamed of. Again, that number is 863-877-1188. Call that number 863-877-1188. There's no cost or obligation to speak with them today. Stay with us. We're going to continue this conversation coming up. We'll be right back. Needing a second opinion on your retirement plan or to see if you were paying more than your fair share to Uncle Sam? Schedule your complimentary visit today. Text VISIT to 270-201-7080. That's VISIT to 270-201-7080. Are you swimming in outdated financial documents? Do you have a shoebox full of random paperwork you no longer need? It's time to round up all your old bank statements, tax forms, and never-ending pile of receipts and bring them to the Statler Financial Services Annual Shred Day, which is Saturday, October 19th from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. at the First Baptist Church, located on the corner of East Center Avenue and Mango Street. Plus, we will have our friends from Heartland Food Bank on location, and they'll be available to collect any food donations you may have. Please note, only paper products will be accepted. We will not accept any plastic, metal, or cardboard. For information, call Statler Financial Services, 270-201-7080. That's 270-201-7080. Statler Financial Services Annual Shred Day, Saturday, October 19th. We'll see you there. Are you confused by all these campaign promises and political talk, or maybe even frustrated? You're not alone. Philip Statler and the Statler Financial Services team keep an eye on proposals made by politicians in Washington and up in Tallahassee that could impact your retirement. As tax laws change and programs like Social Security and Medicare are updated, it's important to have a plan that can help protect your future. Your money needs to last beyond election cycles and presidential administrations. And Philip and the team at Statler Financial Services can help you fix Figure out the potential impact on your plan with their election stress test. They'll help you create a plan to navigate changes in our economy and within our government, no matter who's in the Oval Office or the State House. To schedule your stress test, call or text ELECTION to 863-877-1188. Call or text ELECTION to 863-877-1188. Advisory services offered through Statler Financial Services, Inc., a registered investment advisory firm in the state of Florida. Time to retire right. This is the Statler Financial Radio Show. Welcome back to the Statler Financial Radio Show. I'm your host, Danielle J. Martin, along with Philip Statler. He's the president and founder of Statler Financial Services. Now we're talking about what it looks like creating a five-star retirement plan. Well, picture a five-star luxury resort. You have lush greenery, you have scenic views, and top-notch customer service. Now picture a run-of-the-mill roadside motel. Are you going into that? It's a roadside motel probably is not going to be able to achieve that five-star rating because I'm sure you know something is missing. Well, look at it like this. If you could create, if you could rate your retirement plan, how many stars would you give it? So, Philip, let's take this a step further. We're trying to see how ready we are for retirement. And I love this analogy of how can we make sure that our plans have a five-star rating? What does that look like? Well, I think that when we look at that, we have to look at five main points that I believe 
that you need to have to achieve that five-star rating, right? We need to have a reliable income plan that is um, consistent and conservative. We need to have a wealth management strategy. We need to have a tax efficiency strategy. We want to be tax efficient in retirement. We need to have a plan to address health care. And then lastly, an estate planning strategy. What does that look like for you? And and I know, you know, I call them stars, but in reality, they're just five key components of having a great comprehensive retirement plan, Danielle. And I love that you listed all of them out for us, Philip. And what I would love for us to do is you make this sound easy every time. So what is the first step when we're talking about building this overall five-star, but like you mentioned, it's it's components to an overall comprehensive retirement plan. What is the first step for building a reliable income plan? Well, uh, I guess you would start with how much income are you going to need, right? In, in, in retirement, what does that look like? And, and I think that There's some misconceptions here because a lot of folks have come to believe that, well, I only need half my income or I only need, you know, 70% of my income because I'm not going to have to pay as much in taxes and blah, 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 right? I mean, that's the the thinking a lot of people have. And what we are actually finding is that, uh, you know, we really need to come somewhere greater than that number, somewhere probably between 70 and 100% of your current income. And that's really if you're debt free, you know, if you're not debt free, then we definitely need to probably a hundred percent. Right. So, so that's kind of the first thing is how much do we need? And that comes down to what, what are we going to spend? So we have to kind of put together that budgetary item and determine what our spending is going to look like in retirement. And then from there we can build the income. Where's it going to come from? How are we going to get it? Where's it going to rest? You know, I use a a bucket system where we bucket out money. You know, we got this bucket for a certain period of time and we've got four or five, maybe six buckets of money that we're using to create that income over your lifetime. And so it's just having that process in place to to be able to, to work through it. Philip, you brought up a good point of making sure we have enough money to last us as long as we live. So what are some of the tools for generating some income in retirement? Well, I think when we look at tools, there are obviously uh, bank accounts. I mean, we've got Social Security, whether you call that a tool or not. I think it is to the standpoint of when do you take it? You know, you can minimize it or maximize it, right? And that becomes part of the process and the tool part of Social Security. There are things like annuities that were created specifically to help generate income. Now, when we talk about annuities, there's, you know, obviously you draw a little T account, Ben Franklin, and there's positive and negatives, right? So you have to weigh those out to make sure it's going to work the way you want it to. And that and it's going to add value to your income planning process. A lot of people, you know, they, they have their portfolios, they have dividend stocks, Some people are just using CDs right now because interest rates are so high. So there's all kinds of tools out there. Some people have rental property, right, that are paid for, and that's generating a lot of income for them. So there's a lot of tools out there. You just got to know how to put those tools to work in your current circumstances. And, And again, that comes back to the process of why I developed the core retirement design. The core retirement design looks at three key components. It looks at risk in your portfolio, and it measures that. It looks at taxes, not just today, but taxes down the road and what that's going to look like to you in your retirement. And lastly, an income plan. Having that income plan in place so that you are confident in the retirement income that you're going to get month in and month out. The core retirement design. Folks, give us a call at 863-877-1188. That's 863 863- 877-1188 to schedule your core retirement analysis. Again, that number is 863-877-1188. You know, Philip and his team have been doing this for many years, so they have experience in the questions that you have. They have answers to them, so there's no cost or obligation. All you have to do is give him and his team a call at 863-877-1188. Again, that number is 863-877-1188. Philip, can you talk about what is the difference between an income plan and a wealth management strategy? 
Well, income plan, Daniel, is setting up streams of income. A wealth management strategy is where do we put those, right? How do we get them? What is a strategy? And I look at more as a risk strategy because when we head into retirement, we cannot afford another bear market like we saw in 2000 and 2008 to wipe out everything that we've worked hard for. And so, you know, we saw a lot of people that their 401ks were cut in half during those bear markets. And if you are getting close to retirement, that's something you cannot afford. And so we look at first diversification. We look at two types of diversification. The first type is safety versus risk. And folks, you need both buckets. You need both key components. The question is, how much do you put in each one of them? And that's part of the wealth management strategy is determining how much goes to safety, how much goes to risk. And then the risk bucket, you've got to diversify even further. But but that's really the wealth management strategy is where do we put the assets to create the income that we're going to need in retirement? Philip, you mentioned that word assets. And so it kind of leads me to this question of should retirees still have a portion of their retirement assets invested in the market? I believe they do. Now, how much is up for debate, right? So I believe that we start with what I call the rule of 100. And the rule of 100 says, I'm going to take your age from 100. So 100 minus your age gives us a net number. If you are 65 years old, Try that as 35%. So 35% is what we would be a starting point, not an ending point, but a starting point of what you might want to have invested in the market. Now, we narrow that down more by doing a risk analysis on you to determine what your risk tolerance number is on a scale of 1 to 100. And we use that to, to massage that number up or down, depending on what that looks like for you. But, but that's the key point. And, and I tell people, look, if you're 90 years old, you still need something, maybe 10% in the market, um, because that's going to help us continue to grow our money uh, no matter what. And I know many people have questions about this, Philip. And so it kind of makes me think and wonder, why is it important for our money to keep growing in retirement? Because we don't want it to stop, right? We want our money to last as long as we live. But why is it important for our money to keep growing? Well, I think, Danielle, if if folks think back over the last three years, they know why, right? Because inflation, that ugly word, has uh, has really become part of our vocabulary, unfortunately, because everything costs so much more now than it did three years ago. And, and so a way to keep up with inflation is to grow our portfolios, to grow our investments, to help us through that process of keeping up with inflation. And, and that's one reason that, that we look at the stock market, because the stock market uh, historically has helped folks keep up with inflation. And so I know it goes up and down and there's volatility involved, but that's where we have that diversification between risk and safety. And so if we get those allocations done right, then we can handle some of the ups and downs and the volatility that we see in the marketplace. But all this comes to planning. I mean, that's the bottom line, Danielle, is we have to have a plan. And that plan needs to be written so that you know what it is and you can go back to it and look at it and say, okay, yes, I'm on track. I'm okay. And that's why I developed the core retirement design to help people design that retirement they always dreamed of. That's important. You've worked hard to get to where you are and now you need to be able to enjoy that time in retirement. Give us a call at 863-877-1188 to go through our core retirement analysis. Again, that's 863-877-1188. It starts with a simple phone call. You and I discussing where we are, what you need to do, and how you can prepare for that retirement. Again, give us a call at 863-877-1188. Now, you don't want to make any financial decisions without fully understanding the full impact on all 
of the other pieces of your retirement plan. So do not hesitate to call Philip and his team at 863-877-1188 to learn more about the benefits of having a comprehensive retirement strategy. Again, that number is 863-877-1188. Now, again, we were talking about what it looks like planning for that five-star vacation because when you plan a vacation, you know how to research flights and hotels and look for all the savings. But how can you do the same thing for your retirement plan? We're going to continue the conversation on what it looks like to create a five-star retirement plan right after this. It might ramp up or it could slow down, but inflation never goes away. Do you know how it could impact your retirement savings? Text VISIT to 863-877-1188. That's VISIT to 863-877-1188. Are you confused by all these campaign promises and political talk, or maybe even frustrated? You're not alone. Philip Statler and the Statler Financial Services team keep an eye on proposals made by politicians in Washington and up in Tallahassee that could impact your retirement. As tax laws change and programs like Social Security and Medicare are updated, it's important to have a plan that can help protect your future. Your money needs to last beyond election cycles and presidential administrations. And Philip and the team at Statler Financial Services can help you figure out the potential impact on your plan with their election stress test. They'll help you create a plan to navigate changes in our economy and within our government, no matter who's in the Oval Office or the State House. To schedule your stress test, call or text ELECTION to 863-877-1188. Call or text ELECTION to 863-877-1188. Advisory services offered through Statler Financial Services, Inc., a registered investment advisory firm in the state of Florida. Having that financial and health care power of attorney set up is huge. The power of attorney is going to take care of you while you're here alive. And that's why I think it's ultimately important that you get those things taken care of. Time to retire right. This is the Statler Financial Radio Show. Welcome back into the show. You're listening to the Statler Financial Radio Show. I'm your host, Danielle J. Martin, along with Philip Statler. He is the president and founder of Statler Financial Services. We're continuing the conversation of what it looks like creating that five-star retirement plan. Because, you know, when you plan for a vacation, you know how to research the flights and hotels and look at your savings to make sure you have enough because you want to make sure you get the most bang out of your buck. But the question is, it's also same thing for your retirement plan. Are you doing the exact same thing? It's important to make sure that you are taking the steps to help preserve your retirement savings. So Philip, one of the areas where we can really help protect our savings, you mentioned this earlier in the list, is being tax efficient. So can you kind of explain to us the difference between tax planning and tax preparation? Absolutely, Danielle. So it's really a simple distinction, right? Tax uh, preparation is uh, historic, right? Typically, we get to, you know, January, February of the year after, and now we have to do our tax return. So we're looking back to the previous year and we're taking that information and putting it on the tax forms and paying Uncle Sam what we owe him and we're done. That's tax preparation. It's historic. There's nothing we can do to fix it after it has happened. Tax planning is looking ahead, making adjustments based on belief of what the tax system is going to look like down the road. And not just today. I mean, if we're just focusing on planning for today, it'd be one thing. But we are looking at saving tax dollars, not just today, but over your retirement lifetime. You know, if we can save, you know, fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars of taxes today by doing something different, doesn't it make sense to do that? And that's part of our core retirement design with in the tax element, we are looking for ways that we can save taxes down the road, not just for our clients, but also for their children, right? Because that becomes important is is how much can we save in dollars over your lifetime and your children's lifetime and and that's the planning process and and that's what we really have to look at when it comes to tax planning 
Philip, I love this conversation because you make it sound so simple for us. So how do you approach tax planning? I would say like with the goal that your clients can spend more of their retirement dollars the way that they want to. So what we look at is, um, you know, we, we look at what does it look like now, right? We, we know that tax rates are today probably the lowest that you and I will ever see. And we know that in 2026, they automatically go up unless some miracle happens, right? Which it, it could, but, but it's very slim. And so we know that we're going to see some income taxes going up in 2026. And if you follow the national debt and what that looks like and interest rates going up, you can just visualize that the only way to pay that debt is going to be increased taxes down the road. And so, unfortunately, that's the belief of most of us out here is that taxes are going to have to go up just to continue to pay the bills. And so we it may make sense to pay some tax now versus paying higher taxes later. So we look at things like Roth conversions. You know, that's a big deal. Or even just taking some money now and, and putting it into a non-qualified account because taxes are lower now than what they're going to be in two to three years. Um, But it's a process because there's this little fine line you have to walk between, you know, taking too much and doing the Roth conversion and not taking enough. So I believe we should max out our tax bracket. So if you're in a 12% tax bracket, you need to be looking at ways that you can do Roth conversions to maximize that 12% tax bracket. If you're in the 22% tax bracket, we need to maximize the 22% tax bracket Uh, because because those tax brackets down the road are going to be a lot lower than what we're going to see. And so that's the process. And and it's a big part of our core retirement design is analyzing where you are, what tax savings are going to look like for you, and what can we do? How can we plan that out efficiently and effectively to, to make sure that we're paying the least amount of taxes over our retirement lifetime. The number to call to get on the schedule is 863-877-1188. That's 863-877-1188 to walk through our core retirement analysis. It's you and me, 30 minutes, figuring out where we are and where we need to get to. It's it's that simple, Danny. Oh, it's, it's only a phone call, right? 863-877-1188. That's right, Philip. We like to remind our listeners that there's no cost or obligation to have a 30-minute phone call with you and your team. Again, that number is 863-877-1188. Don't hesitate to call 863-877-1188. Philip, as we're continuing down the list of creating that five-star retirement plan, you you mentioned healthcare. And so that kind of leads me to this stat that I want to share with you that says, according to Fidelity, a 65-year-old couple retiring in 20 2022 can expect to pay an estimated of $315,000. That's after tax for health care in retirement. Now, that is not including long term care. So, Philip, are retirees even aware that this steep estimate and how can you help them prepare for that number? Well, let me break this down in, in kind of my opinion and, and the way I look at it. And that's a 2022 number. Believe me, it won't be long before Fidelity comes out with their 2023 number. And what that looks like. And and it'll be more than $315,000. Because I can remember a few years back, that number is $250,000. So obviously inflation is big when it comes to healthcare costs as well as everything else. And so you have to remember that that big number is for a couple. So that's two people. And that's for your retirement lifetime. If you retire at 65, they're expecting you to live 25 to 30 years in retirement. And so if you break that down annually, it's a big number. Don't get me wrong, but but it's not as hard to get your hands around as that huge number they throw out there. It is important to understand that this is why we need an income plan that allows for and gives us some inflation step ups to help combat things like this. That, that inflation not only does for healthcare, but other items that we have to pay for. And so I think that it, it's just a process that, that we need to understand that 
that health care is going to cost more and more and that we've got to plan that and build that into our income planning process. Philip, what are some of the options for addressing, I would say, potential long-term care costs? Because that number I gave you earlier, it didn't include long-term care. And so what are the options for addressing the long-term care costs? So I look at long-term care in a couple of different perspectives, right? I look at first, because we didn't really have these 20 or 30 years ago. I mean, they were there, but uh, they weren't mainstream. And that's assisted living. And so assisting living is one step in long-term care. Um, But what I have seen, and and this is true, I'm going to say in our local market, uh, not necessarily in the Northeast or on the coast of Florida, because their prices are a lot higher than ours are. But a lot of folks in our immediate area actually can pay long-term care as far as assisted living out of their existing cash flow. Yes, is it expensive? It is expensive. But typically, if you have to go into assisted living, you're cutting out other expenses as well. And then there's nursing home. Well, that's a whole different animal, right? And so how do you pay for that? Well, you you could buy long-term care insurance, you know, way back when, and that will help offset some of the cost. Um, There are actually life insurance contracts, life insurance that have living benefits that will help cover um, assisted living and and bed, uh, nursing home, and, and so that's an option. There are annuities out there that have a long term care benefits, where they take your benefit and their account balance and maybe double it or triple it. There are different things out there, but let me just say they all have pros and cons, and you need to look at them specifically and weigh those things out to make sure that they are going to make sense for you. And then lastly, if you don't do anything, then you're going to be subject to Medicaid is stepping in to help you out. Now, there's ways to plan for that as well. And and I'm not the expert, but I I have a team of folks that can help us walk through that process as well. So so there are different avenues to take care of long-term care expenses. We just need to have the right team in place to help walk through that process, Danielle. Now, Philip, one of the last items that you had on creating the five-star retirement plan is estate planning. So very quickly, how does estate planning fit into an overall five-star retirement plan? Well, it comes back to beneficiaries, having the beneficiary designations properly listed on your accounts. And, you know, if your estate's big enough, maybe you should have a trust. Um, If it's not big enough, then we need to make sure that we've got beneficiaries on all of our accounts. Um, our bank accounts, our non-qualified accounts, you can add beneficiaries to those accounts and you need to make sure you've done that to help bypass probate. Uh, so that's the thing. The other thing I will say when it comes to estate planning documents is, you know, a lot of people think of a will or a trust as estate planning documents, and they are. But there's a couple other ones that I, that I think are as important, maybe even more important. Um, and, and that's power of attorneys. Having that financial and healthcare power of attorney set up is huge. And and I say it this way, Danielle, because the power of attorney is going to take care of you while you are alive. The will, the trust, that's, you're gone. You've passed away. Now, that may be a harsh way of looking at it, but the power of attorney is going to take care of you while you're here alive. And that's why I think it's ultimately important that you get those things taken care of. Now, to recap everything that you mentioned, Philip, the five ways to create the five-star retirement plan include a a reliable income plan, a wealth management strategy, a tax-efficient strategy, and a plan to address health care, and also an estate planning strategy. I know you and your team have done this for many years, and so um, as you wrap up with us today, how do you help people build a retirement plan that incorporates each part, and what's the best way that we can contact you and your team? Absolutely, Danielle. So again, that's why I created the core retirement design to help people design all parts of their retirement process. And it starts with risk analysis. How much risk do you have in your portfolio versus how much risk should you have in your portfolio based on your current circumstances? How close you are to retirement? How old are you? These are all important pieces of that puzzle. And then we look at taxes. 
what do taxes look like for you today? What are they going to look like for you in five years or 10 years? You know, we don't know exactly, but we can make some assumptions and plan out what that may look like for you. And then we need to make sure that we've got that income plan in place. And we need to build it to make sure that we've taken care of inflation. Start that process. Give us a call at 863-877-1188. That's 863-877-1188. If you have questions about retirement, don't hesitate to call Philip and the team at Statler Financial Services. They are here to guide you through a successful retirement. Again, that number you mentioned is 863-877-1188. Again, 863-877-1188. Needing a second opinion on your retirement plan or to see if you were paying more than your fair share to Uncle Sam? Schedule your complimentary visit today. Text VISIT to 270-201-7080. That's VISIT to 270-201-7080. Are you swimming in outdated financial documents? Do you have a shoebox full of random paperwork you no longer need? It's time to round up all your old bank statements, tax forms, and never-ending pile of receipts and bring them to the Statler Financial Services Annual Shred Day, which is Saturday, October 19th from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. at the First Baptist Church, located on the corner of East Center Avenue and Mango Street. Plus, we will have our friends from Heartland Food Bank on location, and they'll be available to collect any food donations you may have. Please note, only paper products will be accepted. We will not accept any plastic, metal, or cardboard. For information, call Statler Financial Services, 270-201-7080. That's 270-201-7080. Statler Financial Services Annual Shred Day, Saturday, October 19th. We'll see you there. Sounds like the mailman's here. It's time to answer questions from the Statler Financial Mailbag. Thanks for joining us back here on the Statler Financial Radio Show. I'm your host, Danielle J. Martin, along with Philip Statler, the president and founder of Statler Financial Services. We're diving into our Statler Financial Radio Show mailbag. Philip, this is where we get questions each and every week about all things retirement. So I'm excited to go over some of the common retirement questions. It's our favorite part of the show. Are you ready? I'm ready to see what's in the bag today. (laughs) Okay, let's see. Our first question comes from Jane from Late Passage. She says, I've been worried about the markets and if we'll continue to see more volatility ahead. I don't want to take any more big losses. How long should I be in cash before I try to get back into the markets? Oh, man. Wow. Jane, I, I am sorry that you're still sitting in cash these days. Um, that's uh, that, that can be dangerous. And, and people see that all the time, right? We, we can't time the market. Nobody knows where the market's going to be a year from now. And obviously this year, uh, we have a lot of stuff going on, right? And we've got elections. We're still dealing with inflation. We still have interest rate issues. So, so it's hard to say when is a good time to get back in the market uh, because we don't know when the next dip is going to come or when the next bear market is going to hit and it goes back down. Um, so I would say that that really and truly in this circumstance, you need to have a well-balanced portfolio. You need to look and see what your risk number is and then have a portfolio that's designed around that risk number. Um, so And then you just start, Putting some money in, don't don't necessarily put it all in at one time, but you know, put 20, 30 percent of it into that portfolio uh, that matches up with your risk tolerance, and then build it from there is is what I would say as a starting point. Really good insights, Philip. I appreciate that. And Jane, thank you so much for your question. Okay, let's get to our next person. Nancy is from Sebring, and she says, I've worked at a hospital here for almost 18 years. I was planning to work a full 20 years before I retired, but now that I'm thinking about retiring early than planned, before I give my notice, how do I make sure that I'm ready to retire? Great question, Nancy. That is a great question, Nancy, because that's good that you decided to ask the question before you pull the trigger and actually retire, right? So, (laughs) so Nancy, what I would do is say, look, you need to have a plan to make sure that 
you know, between Social Security and if you have a pension or if you have a 403B or 401K, that all of that, uh, you know, is going to be a be able to put together that income plan that's going to allow you to retire and enjoy it. You know, now, re retiring two years early may not be an issue, but you don't know that unless you walk through the planning process. So if you start now and put together the plan, then you can see what that two years, three years difference might make for you. So you just need to start the plan. And that would be what I would do and recommend for you, Nancy. Awesome. Most, all these, all these questions are good questions, but it all still boils down to planning, Danielle. And, and again, okay. that's why I developed the core retirement design is to help people plan out and design that retirement they always dreamed of. Easy to do. We'll make sure that you're doing the things you need to be doing. And if not, we'll let you know and see how we may be able to help you fill in those gaps. Give us a call at 863-877-1188. That's 863-877-1188. You know, there's no cost or obligation to talk with Philip and his team, so do not hesitate to call that number at 863-877-1188. Again, that number is 863-877-1188. Okay, Philip, let's move on to our next question. Let's see what's in the mailbag next. We got one from Scott from Avon Park. He says, a couple of friends I and I work with retiring at Age, at age 62 and claiming their social security benefits. I thought I had to wait until 70 to take social security. That's his question. He thought he had to wait until 70. Philip, what's your response there? So, so nobody has to wait until 70 to take their social security. Um, you get the highest amount if you wait till 70 to take your social security. Uh, but that may not make sense for you. Uh, it depends on a lot of factors, Scott. I mean, I look at how old are you? What's your life expectancy? What's the life expectancy of your family? Um, those are areas that we look at when we start planning for Social Security. So you can take it at 62. However, those folks taking it at 62, they're taking a big haircut. They're taking a big deduction because they're taking it so early. The normal retirement age uh, for most of us out here today, <clears throat> is going to be 67. And so at 67, you get what they call your full retirement age, and then you get the full retirement amount. Uh, if you take it before that, you get a discount. If you take it after that, they actually give you more. And so that's why when we developed our core retirement design, one of the components is the income plan. And that income planning process, we look at Social Security and look at different scenarios to determine what might work best for you when it comes to deciding when to take Social Security. And so, again, it comes to planning and, and understanding. And, and I'll tell you that the folks at Social Security, they're not going to tell you when to take it. You know, that's on you to do that, that planning and, and that research to determine what's the best for you, Scott. That's right, Scott. We appreciate your question. Okay, Philip, let's see who's next. We have one from Bill from Sebring. He says that we were not planning to retire for several more years, but we've had some health issues come up and now my wife isn't healthy enough to work. So I'm thinking I should stop working to help take care of her. So can you help us evaluate if this is a wise thing to do for our situation? Well, Bill, I, I, I'm not sure exactly how to answer this one because you know, you have to kind of understand long-term care and how that can really impact your uh, finances and your financial decisions. Um, so it, it really, you didn't say how old you were. So that's a little hard to, to determine what benefits might be available uh, from that standpoint. So I, I think that in this case, you, um, it's going to depend on a lot of things, uh, Bill. One is going to depend on how old you guys are and um, where you are in terms of social security. The other thing that's going to really make a difference is what do we have saved in our retirement accounts and in our other accounts uh, to determine that. Um, and then, you know, if, if your wife can't work, then, then the issue is, is what is the life expectancy that we can have there and, and are we going to have higher medical costs? Are we going to have long-term care issues uh, that we have to deal with? And, and all these things, uh, though complicated in some ways, uh, can be planned for. I, I think we look back to the 
whole process that we need to have a plan in place. And, and everything starts from there. I mean, when, for, for us, uh, when it comes to long-term care issues, um, we have a team that we have in place to help uh, walk folks through that planning process. And, and that's how we help our clients manage the long-term care impacts that, that happen in their life. And so I hope, that, Bill, that answers your question. It's a little difficult without a little bit more information, but hopefully that, that helps you get in the, in the right direction. That's right, Bill. We definitely appreciate your question here. And Philip, it sounds like this is a situation where we highly recommend that you call Philip and his team um, so he can look at your overall plan to see what's best for you. We definitely appreciate your question, Bill. Okay, Philip, we have time for one more question from Janice from Wachula. She says that one of our daughters had to move back in with us this year, so we've been supporting her financially. And our oldest son lost his job. So we helped him cover his mortgage for a few months until he found work again. We were happy. We had the means to help them. But now we're wondering if we can still retire next year. Man, Janice, that's a lot to deal with. Um, (laughs) And and I I feel I feel for you. Uh, But here's the deal. It's hard to say if you can still retire. But I can tell you this. If you have a plan in place, if you sit down with somebody that that can put that plan in place and say, look, here's what the plan looks like with all the different factors you have, then you'll know if you can still retire next year. If you don't have a plan, then you don't know. And so I would say your next step is to get a plan. And I would offer you our core retirement design where we can help you design that retirement and, and make sure. And, and we'll be honest. Hey, look, you need to work two more years or no, you're good. You can go ahead and pull the trigger and retire next year. You know, that's the benefit of being able to have that plan in place. And again, that's why I developed the core retirement design to help folks like you design the retirement they always dreamed of. And it's, it covers a lot of different material, right? We talk about risk. We, we talk about uh, taxes. Taxes are going to be a bigger deal than people realize going forward. To get started, give us a call today, 863-877-1188. That's 863-877-1188. Give us a call today. All right, Philip, thank you so much for all of your great insights. And thank you listeners for sending us your questions. If you missed out on this opportunity, it's okay. Just give us a call here at 863-877-1188. Again, that number is 863-877-1188. But hey, in case you missed anything that we discussed today or any of our previous shows, you can go ahead and check out our website and listen to all of our shows that we've discussed previously with here with Philip Statler. They're all archived. All you have to do is just go to the website and also wherever you're listening to your podcast, you can also check out the Statler Financial Radio Show as well. So if you have questions about retirement, again, do not hesitate to call Philip and his team at Statler Financial Services. They're here to guide you through a successful retirement. We always say you do not have to plan for your retirement alone. So do not hesitate to call 863-877-1188. Again, that number is 863-877-1188. Hey, thanks for tuning in into the Statler Financial Radio Show. We'll catch you next week. Information provided during the Statler Financial Radio Show is for illustrative purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with a qualified investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action. Annuity guarantees are based solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing company. Individuals should thoroughly review the contract for specific details of the product features and costs. Income payments and withdrawals from deferred annuities are generally taxable as ordinary income in the year they are taken. All investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. No strategy is guaranteed to be successful. This radio show is a paid placement.